Uh, it's Jonathan McKee here, um, talking with the team at Harkin. Um, they've asked me to speak about, uh, you know, what the atmosphere is like before these major races. And in particular right now with the Vendee Globe coming up, you know, probably, um, or certainly in my mind, the biggest ocean race in the world. Um, it's, it's um, you know, it's a fair question to ask. What are the skippers, um, you know, waiting in Lorient, um, thinking and doing right now? Uh, you know, my point of reference, I guess, is um, coming from when I raced the Mini Transat. Um, there was a little bit of that feeling, of course, not on the same scale, but, um, you know, we were taking off from La Rochelle and it's really exciting around all the boats are put together and you have to be there for a few days and everybody's got their flags up. And, and then the Barcelona race, which I sailed in was even more so that was really a big deal. And, you know, a lot of shoreside activity around the boats and certainly the day of departure is, um, you know, tons of people and really dramatic and, and all that. So, you know, as a sailor, you don't often experience that. Most of the time when we um, race, we're, you know, there's not big crowds and um, <clears throat> we don't do it for the adulation of the crowd really. So those few times when it does happen, you know, it's somewhat startling and um, it certainly, uh, you know, puts the race in a different perspective when you realize that all these other people actually care about it. It's a, in some ways, it's a critical time, you know, because all your final preparations are sort of coming together. And, uh, you know, hopefully you've got the major stuff sorted out by now. But um, inevitably, I can tell you every single team has got projects that they're, you know, some in some cases, significant projects that they need to get done and tested and, um, and all that. Um, so it's a hectic time. Um, you know, the, the good teams have gotten most of that behind them and they're really more in the fine tuning stage um, here. So, you know, but they're really um, starting to look hard at the weather systems and, um, you know, figuring out, is there any way we can take more weight out of our boat? You know, how can we, with the expected conditions that they're starting to, to look at, how can we optimize our boat even further? Um, so that's some of the things um, that people will be thinking about. Uh, you know, these are the top 20, um, or it's more than 20 even, um, ocean racing teams in the world. So, you know, these, this is the cream of the crop. And if you've made it to the Vendee Globe start, um, you know, you've got a good boat, a reliable boat, you're a good proven skipper, you've got, in almost all cases, a good sponsor. And, um, you know, you've made it to the top and, and now it's, it's showtime coming up on showtime. So you're starting to, um, you know, digest that. Yeah. The crowds only build as time goes on. And on the morning of the start, it's, um, you know, there's, there's just a lot of people around. Um, so it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, you know, for myself, I would try to not spend too much time just hanging around the boat, um, that I would rather just um, maybe arrive a little bit later when the boat pretty much ready to go. Um, you know, obviously spend a few minutes. Um, and the whole thing is kind of choreographed as far as the order in that all the boats leave the dock. And, um, you know, it's it's a show, and it's it, before the start is a little bit of a pageant aspect to it. Um, but then, you know, you go out the channel, you put the main up, and then it's like that's when it really becomes real. <laughs> uh, that's typically how it's done, especially in these bigger boats, is that you are um, typically your side towed out with your support boat. Um, you get a couple of your preparators and, um, your supporters to help you raise the main, um, you know, have your last, um, high fives and, uh, you know, they jump off and then it gets real quiet. There's tons of them, um, especially for the Vendee and, 
they do have a system and everybody knows what it is and there's places you can go and places that you can't go and you know the the professional photographers get a good spot and stuff like that so it's all really well worked out um but having said that it's super chaotic at the same time and there's boats where they shouldn't be and you know you have to kind of pay attention of course um you know by yourself um you know you're trying to steer you're trying to trim you're trying to position the boat and all of a sudden some you know little boat appears right in front of you it's you know there's some um you have to pay attention for sure and just be careful of where you put yourself and relative to the other sailboats as well you know the first thing is that you really don't want to get in some snafu uh, at the start so you want to just be able to sail the first 20 minutes of the race you know without incident and not make it too hard on yourself or have to expend a huge amount of energy right at the beginning of the race um, because it is a marathon. Um, on the other hand, when you actually get out there, you know, the competitive side of you takes over and it's like, if the pin's favored, you know, you're checking out the way line for the pin and, you know, it's, um, it's a race and, you know, part of it is mental and, you know, knowing that you're, um, you're in it, um, for whatever your competitive level is, that's often expressed at the start, um, you know, except to the extent that everyone, you know, is just a little bit more cognizant about uh, not getting in any collisions and being safe. Well, um, you know, it's interesting that you raise that because the maneuvers on these Amoka 60s are, are quite complicated and take a lot of energy. Um, even attack, which on a normal boat would, would seem to be straightforward. On those boats, it's a serious measured endeavor. You know, you've got to um, transfer your water ballast from one side to the other. You've got to transfer all your stack. Um, you're going to reset your foils, um, you know, plus the normal thing of, you know, actually tacking the boat and, you know, transferring the chip sheet and all that. So, um, it's easy to forget something or do something out of order or do it wrong, especially if it's in the middle of the night or you're tired or whatever. So, you know, rehearsing it and making sure that you don't miss any steps. And a lot of people have an actual written, you know, playbook that they just go through and, um, because you really can't afford errors. just you you're miles from anywhere uh, miles from land probably miles from other boats um, there's this tenuous tie to back home through your maybe it's a daily chat um, you know with the with the race team of what's going on that's typically what happens in the Vendee and that, that's how we did it um, also in the Barcelona World Race so you know sometimes you look forward to that as like a way to have some human interaction um, and other times it's kind of, you know, you don't really want to do it. Maybe you've had a bad sked or you've things haven't gone well the day before. And, you know, maybe you're just feeling like, you know, you're missing your family and you really don't want to talk about it, you know? Um, but there's other times when you're like, man, it's going to be great to actually talk to someone because <laughs> you end up talking to yourself. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know about um, other uh, offshore sailors. I certainly talk to myself when, uh, after a few days, um, you know, you're coming up to a jive and you're like, okay, let's talk this through, you know, A, B, C, okay, um, and check the runners under the boom, you know, I don't know. Everybody's got their own way of dealing with it, but I guess it's just, if you got your alter ego out there, <laughs> Maybe uh, you're double-handed instead of single-handed. <laughs>